and I just got this in and just flashed it with the firmware for that part 1313 which is the non-turbo um, let's see if it'll start with that one if it's on there the right way <clears throat> I guess we can uh, get that connected better get all the loose wires out of the way if we can communicate with it Uh, I gotta turn the key on. That looks better. If, yep, that looks good. Because it was 97 degrees Celsius after I replaced the capacitor on the other one, so I think it's gonna start. Fuel pump's not turning on still. Same issue as before. So I think that computer's okay. It looks like I may have to look elsewhere. Something's going on with the pump. I don't reckon it's so low on fuel that it's not picking any up. That all looks good. So 15, 17. Let's connect the other one and see what it looks like. Huh. Actually, that one's okay too. That's, that's high. <clears throat> it is not 26 Celsius. For the coolant, it should be the same as the air, so that sensor's off. There's something really screwy with the voltage in there, so something else is going on now. Something with the fuel pump. All right, got the intake flipped over and uh, upper half of the intake. Here's the crank position sensor, and we'll check it. Need to get this off and get the plugs out. Okay, now we can crank this thing without restriction. Let's see, has this thing got a connector pin out, pin number, or anything on it? Okay, I'm gonna have to look at the diagram, um, but looking at this, ooh, them wires is all nicked up. I think we need to check continuity on this to the ECU connector first before we do anything with the test on the actual sensor, because that might be a broken wire right there. <clears throat> That green one doesn't look, that's got a nice nick in it. So it looks we got green, brown, and, oops, green, brown, and black. All right, let me grab the, Get the computer up and running, and then see what we got. 
So we're fine with the signal coming from the harness. So that's why that wire is not broken. Um, the other two are bridged together and they go to pin. Uh, they go to, I believe it's 68. Let me see. Ground, that is grounded back to the chassis ground. Actually, 1 in 48 is, sorry, that is power. I forgot. So, that's going to energize it. Yep, I'm going to have to energize it, ground it, in order for it to generate a pulse. The ODB2 newer crank CPS crank position sensor on the front of the block um, is a coil. But they're separate coils. Um, I had a body of one. I may have already thrown it out. Is another video? No, that was a speed. That was a speed sensor. That was not a crank position sensor. Sensor, crank position sensor. Have to you have to energize it, and it creates um, a a flux, a magnetic pattern between the two poles, and then as as the reluctor wheel goes by it, there is a um, an area where the the metal will actually cause current to flow between the two coils as it reaches it and then when there's an open spot it stops flowing and that's why it creates the current so I'm gonna have to ground it which I suspect is going to be the last pin on the other end this most likely is going to go to ground battery ground on the other two on the same side, which is going to be right across from each other. No. They're both going to top and bottom, which is power. Okay. How's it grounding? That don't make any sense. Well, 1 in 48 is battery. Okay, well, I guess we'll, we, we know which, which pins are which now. Um, so this is signal, and this is power. So I'm going to put, so it says they're tied together. I'm going to try to cross them both. That goes to 12 volts. And then... We're going to need to look at a C current flow across these two. So this is going to be, oops. So we're going to clip this. Let's see what I'm doing over there. Um, 12 volts to whatever I can actually get this to stay on. Stay. And then that needs to go there and stay while I crank it. Don't want this touching. 